Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. We've got the divisional round of the playoffs. Eight teams are left. We have a four game slate on DraftKings and I'm going to give you a first look for this weekend in NFL DFS. We're going to go over uh, the games that are out there. We're going to build a lineup for you here. Uh, we're going to take a look at the spreads. We're going to do everything that we normally do on these first looks. And I wish you the best of luck this weekend. So without any further ado, let's go. He's a legend. Why don't we start over here on the Fantasy Labs Vegas page? This is a free page. Uh, you go over to Fantasy Labs. You can go to smizzle.tv slash labs with an uppercase L. Hover over NFL and then come down to Vegas. It'll show you this tab. They have it for any slate that you want. Easiest way to break things down. And uh, they track the line movement uh, on how things have moved. So like if there's weather changes or if a player is named out, you can see exactly how that line shifted and exactly when that line shifted. We have the Tennessee Titans coming off of their bye week. They are three and a half point favorites over the Bengals since open. It's moved up a point. Uh, Green Bay, six point favorites over San Francisco. That one has a total of 47 and a half. The Buccaneers square off against the Rams, two extremely stout defenses. Uh, total of 48 and a half here, two really good quarterbacks, two great offenses. Bucks favored by three, possible shootout here. And then the one game that I think everybody's going to center around uh, is Kansas City and the Bills. So like for a few reasons. One, this is going to be the latest game on the slate. So for a four game, two day slate, this gives you the maximum amount of flexibility. So like you're never going to be safe. If you're in first after the third game, it does not mean that you're going to win this weekend because there is so much offense left to come that PMR is going to be your friend on Sunday if you're playing the four gamer. So here we have the entire slate. The game changer is the one that I'm kind of looking at here. Uh, let's start with the quarterbacks. We talked about uh, the spreads. The pricing on this slate, pretty friendly. It's, it's extremely friendly. Uh, Josh Allen is 7,600. He is the one quarterback that I think has the highest percent chance of breaking the slate. We saw last week he posted a 41.9 DraftKings point day. He is always a threat for rushing touchdowns. Gets you a really nice floor of rushing yards with 63 or more each of the past four weeks. Uh, just he's an absolute sicko. You, I, I don't need to go over everything to tell you why Josh Allen's great. And you know who you can stack him with, right? Like primarily you have a tight end that you can stack him with. Dawson Knox had a great week last week. Uh, three very good wide receivers, four really good wide receivers. If we're actually talking about it, it's worse if they're all out, right? It, it's worse if they're all on the field. Cause then we had that random deep ball to Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, so people who played Gabe Davis were not really happy about that. Or Steph Diggs were not really happy about that. Second, most likely to break the slate be the other side of that game. Patrick Mahomes, uh, put up five touchdowns last week, 41 DraftKings points. Doesn't give you the same upside on the ground, though he does contribute on the ground uh, as Josh Allen. But both are very pricey. Both are in that final game. Uh, it, it's going to be tough sledding. San Francisco has not, or sorry, San Francisco does not seem to have the defensive weapons to stop what Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers bring to the table with Devontae Adams and with the other weapons in that offense. And I think that we can attack through them a little bit. Uh, and I'm sh if I'm going to build millionaire maker lineups, I'm going to have a bunch of lineups. Aaron Rodgers to Devontae Adams should be very popular. You can afford basically whatever players you want. And there's super studs on this slate as well. Tom Brady's under 7K. What? Now look, he hasn't had like a big 35 plus point day in a while, right? Like we saw it from him earlier this season with 30, 30, 31, 40, 31. Like he's top 30 points. And when he does that, throws three, four touchdowns, five touchdowns in a game, you pretty much know where they're going to. It's going to be to Gronk. It's going to be to Mike Evans, uh, possibly to the running back, whoever's healthy this week. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, but he's kind of been yo-yoing recently later in the season. The Rams are a very tough defense. On the other side... Matthew Stafford is 6,200. My God, that's cheap. Like that's, that's so entirely cheap, especially considering the way that you have to attack Tampa Bay. You're not going to run the ball against the Tampa Bay defense. You're going to have to throw the ball and you have to score touchdowns. So they're not going to be trying to settle for field goals. They're not going to be running the ball as, especially as much as 
uh, McVay likes to run the ball when he gets inside the five and the 10 yard line. They're going to have to throw the ball to be effective. So the 300-yard bonus certainly in play here. Three, four touchdowns certainly in play here. And I think that this is probably, uh, aside from the Kansas City-Buffalo game, the most likely to shoot out. I'm going to go with Matthew Stafford as my quarterback. If you want to go with Tannehill, fine. If you think that Jimmy Garoppolo is your answer, nobody's going to play him. It's plus double stacks. They just run the ball too much for me. Not as much upside as any of these other quarterbacks. You have to... Hitch your wagon to one of the guys like Joe Burrow who can post that, you know, 35 point plus day uh, in a playoff game. So I'm probably not going to have any Garoppolo. Tannehill's interesting because they get all the weapons back. The first weapon that he should be getting back this week is Derrick Henry. The question is, how much are they going to uh, let the big dog eat? Like, are we going to see this 30 touch sort of output from him in his first game back from injury? Or are they going to give him like 15 to 20? Because that's a massive chasm, right? Like Derrick Henry with 30 plus touches has a much better floor and ceiling than Derrick Henry with 70, you know, sorry, with uh, with 20 touches. It's a totally different animal when you're looking at one versus the other. He should be rested, that's for sure. Is he up to game speed and is he in game shape is another question. Always keeps himself in tremendous shape in the offseason. I don't think that that's going to change now. The pricing difference between Aaron Jones... And A.J. Dillon at 5,100 seems massively off, at least to me. I can't wrap my head around why A.J. Dillon, who has gotten ample usage down the stretch with Aaron Jones healthy, is not like two or 300 less than Aaron Jones. Why is Aaron Jones 6,800, but A.J. Dillon is 5,100? I'm playing A.J. Dillon against San Francisco at home. Cold weather uh, has been the guy that they give the ball to. As good as Aaron Jones has been the last few years at inside the five carries uh, and efficiency in that zone, uh, they have just leaned on him. Cam Akers has looked really well. Uh, the last two weeks that he's come back looked really electric against the Cardinals on Monday night. Leonard Fournette is the big question mark right now. Clearly eligible to come off of IR, but Arians basically said he was not activated on Sunday's playoff win, has not been able to hit top speed without feeling uh, a pull in that hamstring. So if he's not able to go once again, Keyshawn Vaughn is 4,700. Okay, so you're telling me that I can have Keyshawn Vaughn and A.J. Dillon for less than 10K on a small slate. Chat is yelling at me about Gio Bernard, who is also relevant. In the case that Leonard Fournette doesn't go, 5,000. Both are fine. Pick whichever one you want. They both did well this weekend. Uh, a couple of other guys, uh, you know, that you could go with. Clearly, Elijah Mitchell, if you wanted to play the underdog role at 5,800. Devin Singletary, I think, is still underpriced at 5,900. Uh, has been a monster down the stretch. But in order to make the lineup work that I wanted to make work, uh, I could not get to Devin Singletary. And you're going to find out why in just a second. You know that for these first look lineups, I like to double stack. So that means I'm going to be playing two Rams. Uh, pass catchers. One that I'm not going to be playing is Tyler Higby. Four targets, has seen better usage than that uh, the previous weeks. The Rams just did not have to throw the ball. With Michelle running as well as he ran against the Cardinals and uh, with Cam Akers running as well as he did, Higby is certainly in play here. I wanted to get cheaper at tight end, so I'm not going to be utilizing him. Uh, Cooper Cup should come auto-loaded into every one of my Matthew Stafford lineups if DraftKings is working uh, the way that I want DraftKings to work. And then it comes down to, do you want to pay up for Odell Beckham Jr. has become one of their primary red zone targets or Van Jefferson, who has a little bit more downfield upside. Jefferson is clearly eating as the third wide receiver right now. And to me, Odell Beckham Jr. is the primary play. If you're playing mass multi-entry fields, Van Jefferson certainly in play for you. So we clearly already have our primary double stack and bring back in this slot. We still have 5,000 left remaining. Uh, let's just plug in a defense. On defense, 
Every team is good on offense that's left in the playoffs right now. Every team is tough on defense. There's no easy matchups. There's no Jaguars. There's no Jets. There's no free square for us to attack. There's no Texans. Uh, so I want to attack dropbacks, and that means I'm going to go with the Bills defense, who is extremely stout, very good at applying pressure. They're only 2,600. Yes, Kansas City could put up a lot of points. Pressure, not points, is what we're going to target here because even if they give up 25, 27 points, they can eat on defense, considering that Mahomes should theoretically have to drop back 40 to 50 times in this game. This game could score 60, 65 points. You want to target quarterback dropbacks with your defense. So give me the Bills as one of the cheaper defensive plays. That leaves me with 5,800. At wide receiver, I can just do that. I can just plug Devontae Adams in. He's 8,500 against a defense that's not equipped to stop outside wide receivers. They're not good at stopping deep passes down the sideline. Devontae Adams eats on short, intermediate, and deep routes. It's not going to matter. You know he's going to get his uh, his targets. 10 targets should certainly be in play for 8,500 here. Multiple touchdown upside that goes along with it. We've seen him have 30-plus points, I don't know, a bunch of times this season. Averaging 23 on the season. If we get 3x from him uh, on his salary, that's like 25 and a half. So, like, certainly within the wheelhouse, but 30-plus, 30 35-plus in play. You're telling me I can have Cooper Cup and Devontae Adams, and still have a couple of players that could eat in this lineup, we're going to have to find a cheap tight end. Ferkser, if you want somebody that's, uh, I don't know, a little bit cheaper. If you wanted to super stack the Rams, fine. Go with three pass catchers. You think they're going to have to throw more because of Tampa Bay? You can, uh, but I like the look of this a little bit more. I wanted to get a little bit of uh, that Cincinnati passing offense. And Uzoma has gotten more than his uh, needed share of the work to be viable at 3,400. So we're going to plug him in, leaving us with 5,600 remaining uh, at tight end. If I came down a little bit to 3,100, I could get up to Singletary in this spot. If that's the route you want to go, fine. We could have Kittle here. We could get Cam Akers here. Uh, we can't quite afford T. Higgins. So I'm going to go with Brandon Ayuk out of the doghouse and into your hearts. Uh, they're going to have to throw. They're going to have to score points against uh, Green Bay. If they play from ahead, I, or sorry, if they play from ahead, Ayuk is going to be way less viable in this spot. We saw them play from ahead against the Rams, against Dallas. They just bleed the clock. They run the stuff. Uh, playing in Green Bay, I don't think that's going to be the case. They're going to be playing from behind. So I think that probably uh, seven plus targets is certainly in play for Ayuk, even though he's not going to project for that. But I want to play for upside here in the tournament. Uh, and he gives us that short intermediate, breaks a lot of tackles, does have big play upside here, even if Jimmy G's is quarterback. You can change this around to get the later players in the flex if you want. That's a solid tournament lineup without having to plug in guys from Kansas City or Buffalo. But that's going to be the most played game. So this is the contrarian build for you for this slate. So thank you all for watching. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the notifications bell. Look out for another video right there. He's a legend.